next on the agenda, um, moving right into the National Public Safety Broadband Update. Um, Dr. Michael Britt is going to give us an update. All right, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, and members of the SIEC, um, it's been a while since we've met. Everybody appreciates the breather. The NICIA keeps the grant company. Okay. Okay. Um, wanted to review with you the uh, National Public Safety Broadband Network project. Uh, federal leg legislation was passed in the uh, First Responder Network Authority, whose responsibility it is to build out a nationwide public safety broadband network. The, uh, <clears throat> the network itself will be used by federal, tribal, state, and local public safety agencies. And once built out, the notion is to have a self-supporting fee-based network. Um, not for profit, but uh, for responsible for its own care and feeding. Uh, now, there's some public safety agencies that already use uh, air cards and broadband, but the 4G LTE uh, capability will allow for faster and more robust data transfers. Okay. Sorry. Uh, can you guys hear on the phone? They're muted. They're muted. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the uh so speak loud. Just broadband legislation provides seven million dollars for the build out nationwide. It also allocated the D block spectrum for public safety. And it requires FirstNet to work with state, local, and tribal entities to define what the requirements are for the network. That portion of the grant is what we're here to talk about today. It's 135 million nationally, three million for Arizona in particular. Part of that Submission of the grant. Uh, each state needs to identify a single port of contact, and for Arizona, that's our state CIO and chair of this commission, Aaron Sandine. Right. Ultimately, for the build out of the network, each state will decide how it wants to participate. The opt in option means that FirstNet is responsible for building the entire network, the backhaul and core plus the regional wireless networks and radio access network. So everything all the way up to the user device. Uh, state and local fees will pay for operating the network and agencies will pay for their own end user equipment. And then the states will negotiate service level agreements with FirstNet. Any questions on the opt-in option? All right, for the opt-out option, uh, FirstNet is responsible for the backbone and core. States are responsible for building out their own radio access network. There will be NTIA grants available at an 80-20 split between the feds and the state, and that will allow for the build-out of the WAN and the RAN. The state and local agencies will still pay fees for the core and backbone, but just not their portion of the RAN. And then states will charge subscriber fees for the care and feeding of the of the actual RAM towers and, and uh, wireless network. And then again, agencies will pay for their own user equipment. Okay. Uh, overview of the grant: the uh, <coughs> responsibilities of, uh, it allows states to gather their agency requirements, both state, local, and tribal. Uh, for use of the network and to evaluate the future impact on day-to-day -day operations, both bad and good. 
and also to prepare the state for negotiations with FirstNet on what's the appropriate amount of coverage and what's the capability of the network. Again, Arizona gets three million out of this uh, 135. The guidance was issued on February 6th and the grant is due March 19th. Uh, phase one runs approximately a year from July 2013 through June 2014. Uh, education and outreach to inform public safety stakeholders and again to determine how that new technology may impact their governance and operations as they are today. Phase two will be the data collection phase, collecting agency data so we make sure we've identified all the agencies and their points of contact, what their coverage requirements are, what their budget considerations are, and determine possible participants. Again, the local agencies get to opt, uh, get to not opt in, opt out, basically adopt the first net network or not. I mean, this is not an edict or an unfunded mandate or whatever. But, uh, so, in addition, uh, first net is asking local, state and local entities to possibly share infrastructure to reduce the overall cost. And you know, the assumption is there'd be some negotiated settlement on the value of that settlement. For Arizona, we have uh, about 800 agencies that uh, we need to factor in, and that entails about 1,400 locations, physical locations. All right, for phase one, the education and outreach, uh, we'd be presenting uh, the background and goals for the network, reviewing governance, both I mean, national, tribal, state, regional, and local. We hope to have some 4G LTE examples and actual applications to demonstrate when we get to that point. And we'll also be collecting survey data as part of an OEC technical assistance that we've already been awarded. And it's just pending getting our plan together and funding available. And then we also want to set expectations on timing, costs, uh, funding, and whatever business models once first that determines what business model it's going to follow. Michael, what's the extent of the, uh, the TA award? Uh, basically, it's it will allow for a, a survey. They, they have like four components to it. First one was help you establish your governance. Well, in the state of Arizona, we're pretty well established in our governance and we've been working this actual effort for about two years. So we didn't really feel we needed much in the way of assistance there. I mean, you know, TSPC has established the Public Safety Broadband Work Group and we've been working with them and, and you know, two stakeholders. The next was next component was a uh, a survey tool that would be available to every stakeholder and every uh, you know FPE available uh, statewide. One to kind of ramp them up on what it means, and two to gain information about possible participants and current use of uh, LT or air cards, let's say. So just to get a sense of where things stand and where the gaps are and what the future uh, enhancements could be. You don't expect it to be a real comprehensive thing that's going to result in the kind of detail you're going to need for actual uh, design. No, it's not going to help us. Yeah, it's not going to do it for us. We get to do it a lot ourselves. If that answers your question. <laughs> All right. Uh, for the outreach, we plan to have kickoff meetings in every county. Uh, to introduce the, the approach and the way we're going to proceed. Uh, initially, we figured um, we plan to have localized meetings in each county. Uh, our densest counties like Maricopa, Pima, and Pinal, we've allocated 11 meetings per county. And again, this is on average, and once we get into the actual detail, is 11 and a half. We need a little more here, a little less there. It's uh, currently just kind of a ballpark figure. For the 
rural counties with um, in the, in the middle, middle band there, the middle block, we allocated five per county. And then we get down to the really sparse counties, uh, you know, Graham and Greenlee and La Paz, uh, two meetings per county. And actually, if you look at like Greenlee or La Paz, they really only have two, you know, population centers to speak of. And then we do plan to hold tribal meetings and association meetings. So with a combination of county, local, tribal, and association, we should be able to cover virtually everybody in the state in terms of the agencies and make them aware and get their information. On phase two, it's a little fuzzier because FirstNet has not defined what they want in terms of data collection. So we'll outline what we think we need to find out about data collection, and then we'll add the first net's requirements on top of that. So our detailed approach will we'll hold off on that until first net determines what they do. And then we'll work with first net to ensure they understand the requirements and help them meet our needs. Oops. Timeline for the grant, as I mentioned, is released February 6th. Uh, PSIC office has been working with the Arizona Public Safety Broadband Network work group on the application, the approach, and they've reviewed the application. It will it's under review right now and will continue to be reviewed with DPS, Arizona Homeland Security, Department of Administration, and the Governor's Office. Uh, PSIC office will submit the application on before March 19th. And they expect to have the award notices out by July 15th. <clears throat> and it's a three year period of performance for the grant. Total uh, 2.918, or 3 million for Arizona. Uh, the matching contribution can be in kind with uh, state and local uh, salary equivalents, which is the approach we're going to take on that. There is 50% of the grant reserved for phase two, but we don't have to reapply. There's a, uh, they've already going to allocate all the funds. We just have to, once they say go, then we'll give them the detailed outline of our project plan for that phase. All right? Okay. I encourage everybody to sign up for the email list, interested parties list, because we will be sending out information. And the broadband page on the PSIC office website will have schedules and meeting times and all that stuff once we get rolling. Any questions?